testing. Okay, good evening everyone. We're going to be starting in a few seconds, so if you would like to come a little closer to the front. Can you hear, can everybody hear? Not too loud? Not too quiet? Louder? Louder, okay. Okay. So, um, let's begin. We've got a lot to talk about, uh, and I'm going to start the stopwatch. <laughs> Uh, my name is Randy Helton. I am a coordinator of cityhallwatch.ca. Uh, it's basically a citizen's watchdog of City Hall, uh, and it works with a lot of people uh, who, have, who are concerned about how the city is functioning right now. Uh, so uh, you can see a lot more information on the internet, cityhallwatch.ca. Uh, and I'd also like to thank uh, the Shannon Muse Neighbors Association and Neighborhoods for Sustainable Vancouver, who are also supporting this event tonight. Uh, there's also, yeah, let's give him a hand. And most of all, I'd like to thank all of you for coming here tonight. It's a summer evening in Vancouver, and I, I bet if I took a poll, yeah, well, it, it feels like um, winter, kind of. But uh, I'm sure that if I did a poll right now, Rick, let me ask, who would rather actually be doing something else right now? Yeah. A few people look like they're very happy to be here. Well, that's a good thing. Um, I think that's the whole point, is that um, I'm just an ordinary citizen. I, I have a lot of other activities that I would rather be doing, like taking violin lessons. But um, I feel compelled, like a lot of you, to speak out. And a lot of you have already spent a lot of time at City Hall, writing letters and trying to have an influence on how decisions are being made at City Hall. Uh, we're dealing with something that's been growing for decades. Uh, we've got some serious problems that we're going to hear about tonight. Um, I, I actually got involved in this because uh, I've been working for the last 20 years or so on global environmental issues and sustainability. Uh, the Kyoto, like for example, uh, climate change, Kyoto Protocol and uh, finance and stuff. And I see the same kind of dynamics happening with the concentration of power uh, and influence. And uh, if, it, if things are not transparent and accountable, what the people who really suffer are the average people in a society and the planet, our planet Earth. Uh, I, I personally just woke up to all this stuff about a year and a half ago and I started spending a lot of time dealing with it and I find that I cannot, um, I cannot let myself just be quiet and I think a lot of you who took the time to come here tonight probably feel the same way. You feel a responsibility for uh, your city, your society and you want things to work properly. I think uh, that's probably a common motivation here. So um, tonight, the, uh, the title for tonight is that uh, the City Hall planning and rezoning system is broken and let's start fixing it. So we're going to hear a little bit about that tonight. Um, I'm just going to give a little introduction on some of the things that I, uh, as an ordinary citizen, have noticed in the last year and a half uh, working on this stuff. Uh, there are a lot of players in the game of land use decision making. We live, in, we live on the earth and the decisions that are made uh, affecting the, land, the use of land have a big influence on finances, uh, on our lifestyles, on, the, on uh, sustainability, uh, and on, on our own uh, state of mind and the well-being of our families. So it's a very important issue. And some of the major players are, for example, the elected officials. We uh, elect every three years in Vancouver. Next election is November 19th. And during the campaigns, they elect the officials make certain promises, and we expect them to fulfill them. But what we find is that um, we uh, repeatedly in the last few years have been going to council meetings. Uh, people have brought in thousands of signatures of petitions and in the end often they're ignored. Uh, other people, there's also the planning department and the staff of the city hall. Uh, their first obligation according to the official documents is to serve the public interest. But in many cases we have found that information provided to communities is either incorrect, inaccurate, uh, mis... Uh, uh, dis what's, uh, misleading, uh, and the timing is often against the interest of uh, better understanding, and um, so it, it seems also the information, sometimes it doesn't seem like they're, they're uh, doing their job for the public. Uh, in a lot of cases it seems like the, the planning department is a advocate for the developers rather than for the public interest. Uh, yeah. 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 Thank you, I think I, I hit a nerve there. There's also some of the, the uh, bodies that advise the, the city, like the Urban Development, Urban Design Panel, uh, the um, Vancouver Her uh, Heritage Commission, and so on. 
And a lot of this, these are these are well-intentioned people spending their time to serve the city. But in a lot of cases, it's it seems like an old boys' network, and they're they're helping each other out. And we're not too sure also with that they're they're uh, doing the best for the neighborhoods of the city. Um, we also find even that the, the media sometimes some of the, the the most important issues for our communities are not getting into the mainstream media. And I'd like to there are a few media that really consistently cover what we're concerned about. And I'd like to give praise to the uh, the Georgia Strait because they've been actually very good. So we found sometimes some of the issues. I think it almost feels like there's a media blackout. We just cannot get our, our word out into the public, and therefore the other people in the city don't find out what our problems are, and we're left to deal with our own neighborhood issues alone. So what we need to do is to connect the dots. The citizens need to get together. We have a wonderful free uh, service now through the internet. We can reach each other, and tonight I think is an important uh, first step. Uh, we've got to continue connecting the dots and working with each other. We'll find out when other people speak tonight that there are a lot of common concerns and all of the dots actually connect back to City Hall, the steps of which we're standing upon tonight. So um, I think I'm going to finish this part now. I'd like to um, just read out the basic program for tonight so that people can be prepared, uh, come up fairly quickly, and uh, I'm going to try and control this with this stopwatch pretty tightly. So the basic float for tonight, if I can find the page, is just a moment. Uh, first, we will wait. Lost that. One second. Randy. Yes. There you go. Oh. There you go. Oh. Do it. Here. Thank you. Okay. So, um, first of all, we're going to uh, go into two specific rezonings. There's a public hearing tonight. Uh, the first is the Shannon Muse on Gravel Street. Um, we'll have that as our first speaker, although that's the second in the public hearing tonight. Uh, then we're going to hear a little bit about the rezoning on West 2nd Avenue, just across from the Olympic Village. Then we'll hear, and each of those will be uh, a few minutes long. Um, we're then going to hear from uh, Neighborhoods for Sustainable Vancouver about the, the context for this whole thing, uh, how we got to this point. Uh, we're going to hear another thing, a little brief report about um, the next community planning process that's being proposed on July 28th, this Thursday. Uh, then we will go into uh, specific neighborhoods. We'll have about two minutes to speak each. And the format's going to be just to name the neighborhood group, uh, describe the hot issue that you're dealing with, and then third, if you have suggestions of what, happened, what has to happen to improve the system, we'd like to hear them. And we've got, we're going to go from west to east for that segment, uh, starting with the, the uh, downtown east side, um, then uh, Norquay. I've got a written uh, report from 1569 West 5th Avenue. Then there'll be Mount Pleasant. So if you can have your representative ready to speak. Uh, then there's the West End. Uh, and somebody from, we've got something written from Falls Creek. And others, if you're interested in um, speaking for a couple minutes, if you could just come talk to me on the side here, then we'd like to line you up. Okay. Uh, also, if you at a certain point at the very end, we'd like to do a group photo with uh, all the signs representing who is here. So um, you just you just be prepared for that at the very end. If you don't have a sign and you'd like to have one, just to even show your neighborhood, uh, you can get a piece of paper on the table there and write it out. Okay. So now I'd like to go ahead with the next segment. I'd like to call upon uh, John Brimacombe from the Shannon Muse Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Okay, can I get my form back? Okay. Thank you. We're not going to make it. John, yes. John, can I just make an announcement before you start? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Folks, I'll just ask that if you're registered to speak tonight, when we open the doors at 6.45, if you could see the clerk inside at the information counter, just register your name. The other folks that uh, would like to speak and are not registered to speak currently, you can register on the third floor. So anyone else who isn't scheduled to speak and is just here to take part, you can take the elevator or the stairs inside up to the third floor and there's additional seating for you. Inside the council chambers is restricted to just the first 40 registered speakers, all right, just so you're aware of that. So we'll open the door shortly at 645. Thank you. Well, uh, good evening folks. My name is John Brimacombe. I'm the vice president of the Shannon News Neighbors Association. and. Uh, 
I've been allocated a lot of time, and considering how much time we have actually left, I think I may truncate my speech a bit here. Uh, I think Randy covered very, very well the um, uh, the uh, concerns of the Shannon Muse. It was basically my speech. I was listening to it point by point about the, the planning irregularities, about the um, um, the uh, bias of the system toward the developer in many cases, whether it's real or uh, apparent. And um, the, I, I really don't think I can add very much to what he, he said. Um, we have a huge group here tonight. We're all going, it's about, a, we don't know how many people are speaking from Shannon Muse Neighbors Association specifically, but it's the order of 150 total signed up to speak. And uh, we, I would assume that we all have our concerns. Uh, we've done a huge amount of data gathering research to back up all our demands, not demands, I should say, our concerns. And, um, and we hope that we can share them with City Council and have some shift in policy. I cannot say more. We're so time restricted. I think some of us are going to have to go in and speak in a few minutes from now. But anyway, thank you very much, all our supporters, for tuning out. Great show. And uh, see you at the Okay, thank you very much, John. And good luck tonight with this hearing for the Shannon News. Uh, now, uh, Stephen, would you, are you there? Oh, would you like to say something about the zoning, rezoning at West Second? Okay, this is the first topic for the public hearing tonight. Stephen Bohus, he's also a, a collaborator with the uh, City Hall Watch. Thank you. And I'm also a uh, member of Brantford, the Association of Mount Pleasant, but uh, someone else will be speaking. Louder. Louder, okay. Everyone can hear me? Okay, that's good. Well, the other item before Shannon Muse is also very, very important. It's a development for 488 market rental units on 2nd Avenue between Manitoba and Columbia. And why it's important is it's a couple of blocks away from Olympic Village. Olympic Village is one-third unsold. So the City Council is considering bringing 488 new units online to compete directly with the unsold Olympic Village units. Absolutely. That's why it's so important because come December when there are budgeting issues and we're asking ourselves, where did the money go? Why do we have to close a fire station? Why do we have to cut services, cut libraries back? Well, we have to look at our fiscal house right now and today. That's why it's an important issue. Uh, the Southeast Falls Creek Development Fund, actually this is part of Mount Pleasant, so I'm very concerned about the precedent that uh, it might set. They're asking for an additional 50% in density. 50% then allowed for an entire half block of the city. And uh, this would be uh, very uh, out of the ordinary. This development would only be built to lead silver, to compete against lead gold and lead uh, platinum buildings in Olympic Village and uh, it would really make, make a whole 15 uh, story wall, 15 stories, 15 story, 16 story towers with a six story podium. And for amenity, well there's all kinds of amenity but do we want amenity at this price? We want a daycare in the sky on the top of a six uh, story podium. Is that a good policy? So I, I'm very concerned, so I would encourage anyone who wants to speak that you can still sign up uh, tonight, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, next, uh, now we'd like to call upon uh, uh, Elizabeth Murphy from Neighborhoods for Sustainable Vancouver, and she's going to kind of put this into context. Uh, she's been involved for the last several years. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Randy. So, uh, good evening, um, I'm, can you, okay, is that better? Is that better? Okay. Really close. Okay, here I am. Um, I'm speaking in um, general context from a citywide perspective. Um, the previous council under NPA Sam Sullivan brought in the echo density in 2007. And uh, this brought the neighborhoods together from across the city in opposition to this. It also led to the um, 2008 election, which saw basically the, the NPA um, completely wiped off council except for one councillor. And the Vision Council came in with the promise to reconsider echo density. But instead of reconsidering it, they actually are implementing it. And they rebranded it under Greenest City, but it's really the same policy. And as you can see from 
uh, all of the uh, these spot rezonings all across the city that are popping up everywhere. This is the result of echo density and, and all of the policies that are coming out of that, like STIR and, and other such things that are, are also leading to even broad rezonings of complete neighborhoods like Norquay. So um, there's a lot of unrest, a lot of people are concerned. And we're going to mainly leave, um, I'm not going to go on about it too long because there's a lot of people here who want to speak specifically from their neighborhood, so I'm going to leave it to that. But the, the main point I want to make is that none of this is really necessary. The, the existing zone capacity of the city is enormous. And there's no real rush to go out and rezone the entire city in order to accommodate growth. We have enough for the next few decades, we have time to do this right, and we need to spend the time to do it right, not just dump it on everyone's neighborhood in a willy-nilly way. So I think that, that all of this needs to be reconsidered, and um, the, the problem that we're running into is that now they're coming up with a new policy report that's coming forward on uh, Thursday, actually, regarding the uh, next communities to be planned. And this community plan is also going to be leading to a new citywide plan come uh, into the new year in two, 2012. And it is extremely problematic. It essentially defines a new hierarchy uh, with the region and the province at the top and the community at the bottom. And the region and the, and, and the province, including TransLink, can dictate directly to communities. And that is what is being defined in this new planning process. So I encourage everyone here to pay attention, look at that report, and come out in, on Thursday and uh, state your opinion. So with that, I'll uh, pass it on, and thank you very much. And next, is Tom going to speak right now? Tom, well, that's later. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're moving along quickly here. Uh, next, I'd like to uh, go into the next section, and we will have some uh, specific uh, reports from neighborhoods. So first up, we do we have uh, from the downtown east side? We do? Okay. Hi, my name is Fraser Stewart. I'm an elected board member of Downtown Eastside Neighborhood Council. I'm also a volunteer with CCAP. In the Downtown Eastside, we have major problems. I'm sure you all know about them. But the major problem is homes. We don't have any. We've got SROs that are falling apart. And what is the city's plan? More condos, affordable condos. Well, they're affordable for some, but they're not affordable to us. We need social housing. That is what we need. We are being outstripped at a rate of 11 to 1. For every social housing unit that is being built, there are 11 condos going in, which are pushing up the prices of the, the residents, the rent increases, the shops that we can afford are being closed. But I do want to thank City Council for one thing. They have united us. They united the downtown east side with the people from Shaughnessy, with the people from Farragut. The whole city is pissed off. And we're not going to take it anymore. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stuart Fraser. Yeah, um, this this I think the point is that um, this is only this is a serious problem that we, as a city and as a society in Vancouver, have to deal with, uh, and we need people to connect the dots: north, south, east, and west. Uh, whatever ethnic group you're from, whatever income group you're from, we need to work together across neighborhoods to stand up and support each other, uh, eat what the, and uh, get what the neighborhoods want and have an open and transparent system. 
So thank you very much for coming out. Now we're going to keep moving uh, westward. Uh, next, I'd like to call upon Joseph Jones, speaking from Norway, and he will give you a bit of background as well. Thank you. I'm actually looking to indulge in something that is mildly poetic. All I want you to do is, from now on, when you hear the word Norway, think hit and run. Now, what is hit and run? It is a big vehicle that comes out of nowhere with and does huge damage to someone defenseless and cowardly moves on without identification. How does this apply to Norway? Well, before they even started in on our neighborhood center, what did they do? They blockbusted us with a 22-story tower now called 2300 Kingsway. The developer was saying, oh, please, could I have 18 stories? The city came back and said, why don't you make it 22? <laughs> that was before any planning. Now, let's do a little bit of a comparison. The city has said that they would like to double the rate of redevelopment for our area. Hundreds of acres, 10,000 residents. That's like taking the 50 kilometer per hour speed limit and saying, we want to make it 100 kilometers per hour through your neighborhood and take you out. Let's bring it right up to date. 2699 Kingsway, rezoned last week. Urban Design Panel looked at this and said there are some serious problems here. City planners have fuzzed that language out. We are concerned that a key place, place making opportunity in Norquay is about to be lost in the back room. They may not even listen to what Urban Design Panel said that they should do for Norquay. We're watching. We're pushing. We want it done right. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Now, moving, continuing to the westward direction, I'd like to call upon Tom Dury from, uh, he's speaking, he'll tell you what he's speaking about, from Grandview Woodland area. Hello. Uh, I'm a Grandview Woodland uh, resident. I am president of the Grandview Woodland Area Council, but I want to make it clear I do not speak for the council tonight. They have not arrived at a position. Uh, I've studied this uh, administrative report, which will be voted on by council on Thursday regarding the new the planning process for three neighborhoods for Grandview Woodland, which has been rated the most in need of a planning program. Uh, community plan for uh, development pressures on that area and the West End and Marpole all to be done consecutively in a 20-month period. Uh, I, I have to confess to you that I have a hard time making heads or tails out of this report and I've read it. Uh, you can see I've highlighted various sentences in it and areas I, and I'm still confused as to what it's about, uh, a number of times it jumped out at me that they said that a community plan must be nimble and that the people involved must be nimble. It's mentioned several times in this report. I went, I remember Jack be nimble. I looked that up and nimble means flexible, flexible. So let's be ready to bend. Now, <laughs> as Betty pointed out, there is a hierarchy here with the province and the region at the top, the city there next, and the community down there at the bottom somewhere. They do want to know what we think, believe you, but we must be flexible. You know, I, I started to make a list of all of the things on top that we have to consider that will have a say and that take priority over anything that the community might want. There's the regional growth strategy. There's the greenest city. There's the eco-density. There's how the housing and homeless strategy yet to come. There's the transportation plan. There's TransLink. 
and there are neighborhood centers, and the list goes on. I feel like we're kind of crushed down at the bottom, and unless we band together and say we are not going to be at the bottom of this, we are the people who put these people in here where they are. They're there to do what we want them to do. Let's insist on that. <laughs> if not today and on Thursday in November. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. I'd like to also point out that this November 19th is a very important time uh, but and this is really an ongoing thing. This is like a multi-generational issue I think we're dealing with, so we need uh, staying power as well. Uh, so I'd like to next call up, or next I'm going to just read something, uh, and after that will be the um, uh, Mount Pleasant group will be speaking. Okay, so I have just, uh, I don't think there's anyone here from uh, the, the area around 1569 West 6th Avenue, but uh, this was actually one of the first that, um, woke me up to the problems uh, just before we started City Hall Watch last October. This was um, a place that was zoned for five stories, I believe. It was rezoned up to 15 uh, at 1569 West 6th Avenue. Uh, the additional density for the building came from uh, some density bonus that the developer brought in from another part of town. I think it was uh, from the Woodward's building. and. Uh, this, it also apparently violated the guidelines for the Burrard Slopes, the planning guidelines which have been protected and respected for 20-30 years. About uh, 200 people signed a petition. There were, uh, I don't remember if it was 20, 30, 40, 50 speakers. All were against this rezoning except one person, and that person is thought to be working for the developer. <laughs> and I understand that's not unusual, something like that. Um, the local leader wrote to the mayor and council, so I just extracted from a copy that I received. Uh, here it says, I am voicing these uh, opinions for those citizens in the community who feel crushed and felt abandoned after the city council meeting for this decision on this development and other developments like this. But sadly enough, the development will move forward and this email will be forgotten. And parking, or parking density, congestion, safety issues and so on will cascade down to the next generation of elected civic officials. That was their message. So, thank you. That was from uh, West 6th Avenue. This is just another example of many. Uh, next, I'd like to call upon the uh, Mount Pleasant group. Yeah, okay. I'm totally new to this, three months in, um, but I'm part of RAP Residents Association Mount Pleasant and we formed three months ago um, because of what's happening in our neighborhood and I'm just going to read our little synopsis for you. Um, basically the planning department is not listening to citizen input as you know the reason why we're all here. Um, after an extensive multi-year community plan consultation, we're now besieged by developments that relate in no way to our clearly stated neighborhood needs and principles. That's yep. Undermine housing affordability, which is huge. I don't know why affordability keeps getting kicked out of the equation, but it's all about renting, 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 but nothing about affordable renting. Um, and it vastly increases our carbon footprint. And so some examples of these ill-fitting proposed developments include the Rise Tower development in our neighborhood at Kingsway and Broadway. Um, they propose 26-story high-rise. Um, after two community workshops, they've now knocked it down to 19, which is still pretty ridiculous in, in our neighborhood. And um, also what Stephen had talked about, the significant alterations um, with the Southeast Falls, Falls Creek Development Plan, including a new 16-story tower at the corner of Columbia and 2nd Avenue. Um, these don't respect either the approved plans or the scale of Mount Pleasant. Um, so we're just asking, you know, we want our community and development plans to be respected and the affordability and diversity of the neighborhoods preserved. And I think this is a great start just to connect with each other, get all the community groups together and just tell City Hall we're not going to take it anymore. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> but, uh, just the last thing, I just want to read our tagline. Um, we have a city starts with the community and we aim to keep ours alive and this is the way to do it and we just need to educate ourselves and we need to educate those around us so people know what's really happening in Vancouver. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Sandy. And uh, so next, next, uh, actually, it's my turn to speak uh, for the West End. I'm also uh, working as the, or uh, volunteering as the president for the West End Neighbors, uh, which was just established a year ago. Um, we have started from uh, just about a year and a half ago. Uh, we're facing some very large rezoning applications hitting the West End under the STIR program, short-term incentives for rental housing. This is a, a program you may have heard about that gives developers large incentives to build luxury uh, rental apartments, basically. Uh, and it allows the city to basically ignore the guidelines of, for height and density and so on in the neighborhood. Uh, we have now over 12,000 people who've signed a petition, and the title of the petition is uh, No Rezoning Without a Comprehensive Plan. Uh, we, it looks like we may be actually getting a comprehensive planning process uh, could be decided on this Thursday in council, but uh, we're also very cautious about that because we know how things work in the back rooms of City Hall. So we're, we're watching that very carefully. I think that's all I'll say for West End Neighbours, but um, we are, um, we've got a good group that stays, that is really sharing a lot of uh, wisdom and expertise, uh, very active, and uh, it's, it's actually been a wonderful experience to get to know our neighbours by dealing with this uh, external threat coming in. And, and just if you're interested, one little tidbit, the West End population is about 46,000 people. It's actually more than several of the municipalities in the Metro Vancouver region, including uh, West Vancouver in that, in that community there. Okay, so next um, we next go to False Creek, uh, and I don't think we have anyone from there here. And that's one of the things tonight, um, you see the number of people here tonight. This was organized on just a few days notice, and it's in the middle of the summer when a lot of people are on vacation. Uh, and the time when the City Hall tries to rush through a lot of things before anyone notices. So, uh, yeah. And actually, if you, uh, we'll be reporting on some of this on City Hall Watch, but this week there are some big, big things going through that have implications for the city, almost under the radar. But uh, from the Falls Creek Residents Association and the Crosstown Residents Association, um, we received this letter. They, um, actually, also the City Gate Inter Tower Group. These three groups uh, sent this to us. And it says, over the past few administrations, members of our resident associations have made submissions to elected officials that have, as their underlying concern, our reality that staff recommendations on major planning projects simply cannot be trusted. Facts are often misstated. Positions are taken by the community are often misrepresented. I'll just wait a moment here. We hope they'll be okay. So, and analysis of the planning department are often inadequate and incomplete. Uh, for the past four years, members of our neighborhoods have participated with the planning department in the high-level review and the subsequent joint working group. Yet, whenever information comes to council for a decision, we are again required to spend hours of volunteer time organizing citizens to attend public hearings and voice dissent against the staff recommendations. The reality for us is that our positions are simply not heard and or not respected in the various public engagement processes managed by the planning department. And the suggestions are uh, two points at the end for a better system. Number one, assign elected officials to participate in rezonings to ensure ac accurate presentation in staff reports. And number two, demand a pros and cons section in each staff report on rezoning. So there's some suggestions. And I'd like to just take, that's the end of this, this uh, report here. But from tonight's meeting, we'd like to uh, take the input that we received uh, and we'd like to continue receiving information and put it into a report of, of all the issues in the different communities. So that'll be available on the web, plus on YouTube as well, I think, for anyone who couldn't come tonight. Uh, so I think we have one more uh, from, I believe, Arbutus Ridge. Doreen Braverman is going to speak for a moment here. They just had a rezoning done recently. Yeah, we sure did. <laughs> Last week, uh, Council unanimously supported the rezoning, spot rezoning, for Arbutus Shopping Centre. We, 13 years ago, we fought that. That's when we first organized in our community. And uh, we won all, every, 
Well, one person voted against us, but uh, we, we won our point at that time. Now, the, the last 10 years we've been fighting it again because the developer came back a little stronger and a little bit smarter. And uh, the only person who voted for it last time, for the first time around, was Sam Sullivan, and it's because the developer had promised uh, uh, housing for handicapped people, so we forgave him for that because we figured that was a good reason for him. Anyway, the, uh, the, every one of them had made reservations about some of the plans, and there's so many flaws that doesn't it actually contravenes all our arts planning that we've all worked for for so long. Um, I'm just going to give one suggestion, and actually it's not mine. It was Sheldon who told me about it, but I think it's really a good one. You know, when a developer wants to rezone, he has to give a substantial amount of money to the city to pay for the rezoning. This is my suggestion, and I'm going to try and make sure everybody else likes it too. I think they should also be um, forced to give money to the community for consultation. And if the community had some funds, because we don't have any funds ourselves, and so you're always fighting the, the planning department who seems to work for the, for the developer. So we think that there should be a community consultation fee to the developer. And the developer wouldn't be involved in the, in the discussion. It would be the planning department with the community. And that might be a way for at least you to get the right information and, uh, and a fair trial. Thank you. Thank you, Doreen. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll be ending in a few minutes uh, on time, I think. Uh, I'd like to call upon uh, Ned Jacobs here to uh, give us a few closing comments. He's the, uh, Ned. Ned is the director of um, Neighborhoods for Sustainable Vancouver. And he's also been involved for uh, quite some time, so he's seen, seen a lot of things happening here. So I'd like to ask uh, Ned to say a few words. Thank you. The first time in my life I've ever been called the director of anything, and I'm not. I'm just on the steering committee of, of this uh, uh, neighborhood umbrella group. Uh, uh, yeah, I think Betty, uh, who also spoke for the steering committee, uh, covered a number of the basic points when she spoke about how about eco density and how we, it was promised that that would be that the flaws that we presented. Uh, in great detail would be corrected and never have been. That promise has been broken. Um, also, the fact that there is no shortage of, uh, of zone, zone capacity in the city of Vancouver, either directly zoned for uh, increased density or under rezoning policies. For instance, the whole Woodward's uh, development is under, uh, about four years ago, it was put under a rezoning policy, the, uh, uh, the Woodward's, uh, no, I'm sorry, did I say Woodward's? Oak Ridge, the Oak Ridge Center, um, uh, for uh, nine towers, and it's right at a transit station. But if Shannon Mews is rezoned, there will be no incentive for Oak Ridge to go ahead with that plan, which was designed in a way that it wouldn't have serious impacts on the surrounding community because the demand will be taken up by a much more profitable redevelopment at Shannon Muse. So what we have here is no sense of real sense of strategy happening in terms of how this city is being redeveloped and how it's being planned. It's all about give the big developers each of them gives a lot of money to this council, to, to, to all except for two members of this council, uh, Council Woods, uh, Woodsward uh, and uh, Councillor uh, Cadman. And uh, you can see that they've been, uh, particularly Councillor Wood, uh, Woodsward, has been far more sensitive to uh, community concerns as a result of that, of not having uh, to pay back these promises uh, or these large contributions. So. Uh, this is the situation that we're in. It's a very sad situation where really patronage is driving the city. So what happens is the city's manager and uh, uh, several key city councillors, not usually the mayor, tell staff, they have their discussions with the developers, they tell staff what they want, and staff understands basically what their job is. If 
They try to stand, in, in many cases they don't agree, they send the reports in, the reports come back rewritten in some cases by the city manager, the staff reports, and the staff have to sign off on them whether they agree with them or not. We don't know, they, this is kept very hush-hush, we don't know if exactly which ones and which points are made, uh, but discussions that I've had with recently retired planners from the city of Vancouver and even some that are currently working for the city, uh, and I won't mention any names, uh, have, have made it clear to me that, the, that even staff is not comfortable with this situation, this very, very ad hoc, developer-driven approach to planning and uh, with all the greenwashing entail. So it's a very difficult situation. Uh, we, we're facing an election in November. There are only a few declared candidates from parties who do not take this development money, who are not beholden. Uh, Maybe that will change. Maybe some uh, good candidates will come forward out of the process. I know that uh, there's uh, one for the NPA. I don't know if he takes development money or not, but Bill McCreary has been very, very good and sincere in supporting this a much more balanced approach. Uh, this isn't uh, election season quite yet, but we've got to start thinking about that uh, coming up because uh, obviously these councillors are, are not listening. Several of the rezonings that were thought might happen in uh, come forward uh, this spring or summer have been held off till after the election because of concerns that it would cost this council too many votes. Uh, so this is this is the that's the skinny of it. It's 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 not a pretty picture on how planning is being done in the city anymore. So thank you. So thank you everyone. Um, just uh, we're going to be finishing in a few minutes now, or a few seconds. Uh, tonight there are seven people signed up for the first uh, major rezoning on West Second Avenue across from Olympic Village, uh, and I think you can still sign up if you'd like to have a few words with the council. And then also then there's Shannon Muse uh, after that. So we encourage you if you do have time to stop in. Uh, to show support for the neighborhoods that are involved. Uh, and I'd just like to finish up by saying um, we're also going to have a group photo if you could just join, come to the front in a moment and hold up your signs. Uh, and just in conclusion, in our society there are a lot of players in the game of uh, running a city and making decisions. There's the elected officials, the staff that we are paying the salaries for, there are consultants in the development industry, architects, uh, there are PR firms, academics in the schools and universities, the media, uh, there are developers, investors, and speculators, and there are also a few citizens living in the city. And we all need to work together to make it work properly. So um, the, we're dealing with some issues that have been going on for many years, uh, with some very deep uh, systems that are functioning or dysfunctioning in the city. I think that uh, with an election in this year, November 19th, there's some opportunity to uh, have them make promises uh, and, and hold them accountable for their previous promises. But we've got to keep, uh, keep networking, really. It's the, it's the people of Vancouver that need to work together to fix the problem that we've got. And we need to then make the professionals and the elected officials uh, do what the citizens want. Uh, and let's, we've got the future of Vancouver. It's a beautiful city. And let's, uh, let's make it something that we can all really be proud of by doing it together. Thank, thank you for coming tonight.